Hey guys, so this clip is on the future of cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Uh, this video isn't going to be perfect, but I've wanted to get it out there for months, so here it is. Uh, I first became really aware of Bitcoin about three years ago, and I've been thinking, thinking about reading it and just studying it uh, pretty much every day for about a year and a half now. Uh, my core passion is investing, just looking for the best investments in the world and that kind of stuff. So these two realms basically intersect in my mind, uh, possibly because I see Bitcoin and cryptocurrency just as extremely good, potent investments, and also because they're, they relate to the future of investment tools. And I'll discuss that a little bit more as I go on. Uh, but here are some things I wanna talk about that I can see coming in the future, uh, or some things similar to these ideas. So firstly, there's currently thousands of cryptocurrencies out there many of which aren't very relevant, but a few dozen have some pretty good merit. Uh, but I believe the amount of new cryptocurrencies being created isn't gonna slow down. It's a growing trend. I think it's gonna actually increase. Um, I think sooner or later, we're gonna have millions of them, and I'll expand on this too in a minute. Uh, but also to relate to this, I think Bitcoin is going to start to have a smaller and smaller role in the cryptocurrency ecosystem at large. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin was the first, and huge props for clearing the way. But there's some really innovative stuff coming and we kind of need to grow too. So just to add on that, Bitcoin is currently around 90% of the total market cap of cryptocurrencies, meaning they have about 90% of the total value of cryptocurrencies. But I think it's only a matter of time until that's less than 50% and so on, which means that there's gonna be some new currencies that come out with technolo technological improvements, excuse me, that are probably gonna grow faster than Bitcoin did. I feel confident in this, uh, but it's just my perspective. But yeah, so continuing on, uh, like I said, there's currently thousands of cryptocurrencies and more to come. So how are these all gonna be managed? Well, the way I imagine it is that there's gonna be some major decentralized exchanges uh, Say, say, for instance, you know, some of the exchanges work with the top 500 currencies. So let's say a merchant wants to accept, for example, Dogecoin, which is an, another cryptocurrency, uh, but the consumer wanted to use Bitcoin. So these exchanges would make it possible and they'd make it happen really fast. So we've actually seen the first company doing this. It's called Shapeshift. They're also functioning as a payment processor to fulfill this essentially. So if a merchant wants to be paid in Dogecoin, but the buyer doesn't have Dogecoin or that currency, or, uh, or let's say he didn't want to use Dogecoin, they could use the payment processing tool to pay in the currency of their choice. Uh, so let's say he wanted to pay in Bitcoin, he could pay in Bitcoin, and then the payment processor automatically turns that Bitcoin into Dogecoin, which the merchant accepts the Dogecoin. So I like this, it has a really cool effect because if a certain currency is in high demand by merchants, uh, the law of supply and demand would cause the price to increase for those currencies that are in demand. Uh, so said another way, popular currencies would gain in value, assuming there's a limited supply of them, which is the case for most of them currently. So uh, the way I would see it is there'd be major processors for the major currencies, again, like the top 500 or maybe top 100. Uh, but then there's other processors that would service the millions of other smaller currencies. Uh, they would probably have bigger spreads, which means they have bigger profits in return for dealing with the smaller currencies. But this would function much like uh, the Forex uh, currency pairs function, uh, which are called exotic. Uh, so yeah, right now there's exotic currency pairs that aren't uh, used a ton and there's typically bigger spreads in them, but they exist. So that's basically it. Uh, in this way, different there'll be different currencies uh, backed by different people and different ideas, and those can gain more, more value as people support them and people support what they believe in. Uh, and again, I just think this is really awesome. Uh, it's a really cool expression of us using our money. Uh, yeah, I like that. I think that's, and I think that's how the future will be and it's really cool so the other thing i want to talk about are decentralized exchanges uh, right now if a person wants to make a company 
and get public investment in the company, it's kind of difficult to do. It's pretty difficult actually, especially if you're a smaller company. You know, traditionally you go to you know your friends or family, your parents or something like that. Uh, but I think that that is kind of uh, it's really old school, and I think it's going to become obsolete pretty soon. So say you have a company, and the whole operation is worth ten thousand dollars, so a pretty small operation. Uh, again, if you wanted to go public right now in the U.S., your company needs to be worth many millions of dollars. It needs to have existed for several years and have been profitable. Uh, these are just really, again, very difficult. The vast majority of small companies, you know, can't do that. So uh, these guidelines that we currently have in place to get companies listed on the stock exchange are good because they keep, you know, only relatively low risk companies on the stock market. So in that way, it's good. But I believe in a free world, we should be able to easily invest in companies of all sizes, uh, even if they have a little more risk, you know, but if you believe in something, you should be able to invest in it pretty easily, however small they may be. Uh, and you should be able to do it with the ease of using an online instant exchange. So the way I see this is people could issue their own currencies, which also function as stocks within a company. So something to note here that the lines kind of blur between a currency and a company, something which we don't, we haven't really seen a lot of in our world today in 2015, uh, something we don't really acknowledge very much. Uh, again, just not really commonly out there, uh, currently at least. So, well, with this new kind of paradigm, a, new, a newly created company could be listed on an exchange, uh, which the exchange is probably tailored towards smaller cap companies. So again, imagine our $10,000 company coming into existence and people just being able to easily invest at these micro levels. Again, this is currently really hard to do, especially in having a reliable way uh, of having a record of ownership and not just giving a microloan. Uh, so yeah, these companies can also be backed by the reputation of those people behind them. I imagine that there's gonna be some kind of reputation system in place, uh, probably different reputation-based companies where you can look up feedback on a currency or, or a company or the individuals behind them. Uh, and then again, investors are just free to buy or sell shares of these companies at their will. So that's kind of how I see the future of uh, decentralized exchanges and again, allowing smaller companies to be able to be invested in, which I think is a really good thing should allow for more growth uh, in the future, micro growth especially. So another kind of thought on this, these companies could also have inflation built in or function uh, in a way similar to the way that our reserve banks function for all our, all our different currencies right now. So for example, say a company chooses to have a 10% inflation rate a year, uh, from which this inflation, the owners of the currency or company could get 10%, that 10% it would be theirs. So to kind of explain that, let's say there's a million shares out there for this company. Uh, every year there's 10% inflation. So the first year that would be 100,000 shares and the owners of the company could keep that. So this brings the total supply to 1.1 million. Obviously everyone's shares get a little diluted, but I think this is a cool idea because it would incentivize the creators or directors of the company to support their company rather than, you know, for instance, if they sold all their shares or stocks, uh, they don't have you know, much incentive there to continue progressing it. Uh, I think this is a cool idea, just allow more power over your companies uh, slash currencies. So what exists out there today? Where are we at currently? Uh, currently, uh, the, the way being led by this is a currency called NXT. Uh, it's a cryptocurrency, uh, which also has a lot of things built into it. You can issue your own currency within their currency which I like because it's backed by their network's power. Um, this is important because right now, if you wanted to issue your own cryptocurrency previously, you know, you'd have to have your own network or that kind of stuff we would have, and that would have to be supported by, you know, a decent number of users. Otherwise the network uh, essentially isn't supported. So I like how NXT did that props to them for leading the way. So you can essentially use the strength of their network uh, 
to to back your currency. And I think that in the future, it'll be something, you know, might be that or something similar uh, where it's, it's just the point is it's much easier to create a cryptocurrency than, you know, the first ones that were created using a proof of work type algorithm or whatnot. So looking ahead, uh, what's next? One thing that we're still waiting for are smart contracts. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this because uh, you could use them to trade options and options are a hugely important part of the financial world. Uh, I love them. I think they're a tremendous trading tool, but that hasn't existed effectively in cryptocurrency at all yet. So contracts require, or excuse me, options require contracts to be able to have some kind of event occur at a certain date. And that's not out there yet. This is going to require smart contracts, as so they call it. So I've been waiting on this since fall of 2012. It looks like it's coming soon. Hopefully it is. Uh, there's some promising currencies uh, and protocols on the horizon that are trying to implement stuff like this, including Ethereum and NXT. But we'll still need to see how they're developed and how they how they actually work. So. That's it, I just wanted to get this out there. Uh, again, this is, I've studied this for a long time. This is hundreds of hours of my own research. Uh, I tried to compile it in a fairly short video and hopefully an easy to understand format. Uh, yeah, hopefully it's been helpful to you guys. If it has, uh, please definitely let me know or like it if you do. If I see demand for this kind of stuff, I'll keep producing it. Just let me know what you guys uh, want me to talk about and whatnot. Well, so that's it. Yeah, hopefully it's been helpful. Be well. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.